They're feisty, fun, and forever proud to call Cleveland home. You're watching Cribs in the CLE. Josh and Maria live. What's up, guys? Welcome to Cribs in the CLE. I'm Josh Cribs. And I'm Maria Cribs. And welcome. It was foggy this morning. It was foggy. It was Maria like thought it was a fire <laughs> or something else was happening. I did until we kept driving. I we was, was like, okay. Right. It's going to be the whole way, the whole ride well, downtown. What's going on? <laughs> but I'm feeling good. How you feeling? I'm feeling real good. Hope the viewers are feeling good. I know y'all looking good. I, we got some yeah. of the best looking. Every time someone say, hey, I know who you are, and, and, I watch the show. I'm like, I can tell you watch the show because you're looking. They just right. look good. Our viewers look good. drive through. Y'all be looking good. Everywhere around Cleveland. Yeah. And thank you for all the well wishes yeah, on and the, the show. Support. Yeah, and yes, we you. are a beautiful couple. I had to Goodbye. Tell you. <laughs> Goodbye. And y'all no, beautiful people, too. And y'all beautiful. A lot of people say that. That's all. Oh, they do? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, what you got for us today? Josh put this whole show together. Well, not the whole show, but the first part of the show. Yes, Sharon Osborne. We wanted to, so many people was asking us to dive into that. Oh, yeah. And the uh, the things that, you know, went on between her and Cheryl Underwood and kind of unpack that a little bit. Okay. You want to do that? Oh, I don't mind. All right, listen to this video, then we'll unpack it. From me. I will um, ask you again, Cheryl. Yes. I've been asking you during the break. Yes. I am asking you again. And don't try and cry, because if anyone should be crying, it should be me. This is the situation. Yes. You tell me where you have heard him say, educate me. Tell me when you have heard him say racist things. E educate me. Tell me. It, it is not the exact words of racism it's the implication and the reaction to it to not want to address that because she is a black woman and to try to dismiss it or to make it seem less than what it is that's what makes it racist but but right now I'm talking to a woman who I believe is my friend. And I don't want anybody here to, to l watch this and say that we're attacking you for being racist. And, <sighs> and, and that. So, what do you think about that? So, um, I thought that Cheryl Underwood was trying to articulately say to her, we're giving you an opportunity to explain yourself in a way that doesn't come off to everyone. Um, like you're agreeing with the racist comment that Pierce Morgan said. Not comment, but commentary. Commentary. For the last few years. Yes. Meghan Markle. And other people as well. Not just Meghan Markle, but we're just speaking about her right now. I think that... Oh, did you want to... I'm sorry. Well, yeah. Um, and so sh she was having Pierce Morgan's back mm -hmm. to the point that everything he said that everyone has deemed to be a problem and racist or whatever, that she was just gung-ho was saying, oh, I got Pierce Morgan back. Why he... What's wrong with what he, he said? He paid for his opinions and right. freedom of speech and things and, like that. And yes. And so Cheryl Underwood was correcting that. Go ahead. No, go ahead. What are you saying? Nah, go ahead. You got it. No, I just think that the fact that everybody, you know, people are saying this guy says racist things. This guy's being racist towards her. The thing that he says has racial undertones and epithets to it, you know? So the fact that Cheryl went out of her way to say, this is my friend. It's like, wait a minute, when someone's accusing someone of being racist, maybe you should step back, friend or not, and say, maybe they, 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 they might see something I don't see because I'm not them. I'm not the ones that are claiming him to be racist. You know, we can't always, when you're of a different race, you can't, you can't judge what's racist and what's not because you're not of that race, you know, especially when you don't know history. So the fact that she went out on the limb for Pierce Morgan, she, I think she's receiving the backlash of it. Now, what I don't like, and after I kept watching the video, and I try, because I don't try to just go off of clips, I try to actually go and find the whole interview, which for some reason, they don't have the whole uh, show nowhere to be found. I only see clips. So from the clip that I saw, now, if y'all know Cheryl Underwood, she's a comedian. That's where she got her start from. She could have, she could have tore Sher, um, Sharon Osbourne all the way down. And the what I saw is as a black woman, you have to stop sometimes and think, is this worth risking my job? Because she's up here doing these, she's doing this tear thing right. now. Now Sharon's playing the victim now. Right. Is it worth me? Because if I lash out at her, it's going gonna, it's gonna to deflect everything that she's trying to deflect on me, and I'm going to be the angry black woman. And that's a hard stigma to get from under. So right. I, I applaud Cheryl for having the restraint. She's, she's kind of started talking to Sharon Osbourne like a child. She had to go to a child tone and pacify her. I, and you shouldn't have to do that. We got one minute. Can you, you good? I think that... Um, 
Cheryl came was coming from a point a standpoint of saying hey I'm your friend mm -hmm. let's let's discuss this rhetorically let's not lose our tempers and they lost their but tempers. But when someone it's not they because Cheryl didn't lose her to see, well, right. see how you Cheryl drag you dragging everybody into it. Cheryl they, didn't lose her Cheryl, temper. Cheryl it wasn't a they in that. It was the it show was, tell it was me. very tense. Tell me where when someone's talking to you like that in that tone tell me right. teach me and don't you dare cry. Do you think Cheryl Who Underwood? Who is telling don't to dare cry? It's just the tone and everything in your tone is saying that you agree with Pierce Morgan for a reason because look how you're talking to me. I am your equal. You are not above me. So what makes you think you can talk to me like that on live TV right. first of all? Right. You know we've interviewed them before right. and even after the interview we were like oh this is kind of strange. Just the whole patriarchy of it all. You know so it was it's just I wish we could unpack it more right. but we got to go because it's St. Patrick's Day and we're taking you to the kitchen in Ireland. Don't go anywhere you guys. We'll be right back. You're watching Cribs in the CLE. Welcome back to the show. Now, Josh, it's St. Patrick's Day. It is. And I'm feeling lucky. Yeah, because you play your lottery tickets every day. I'm, I'm going. I mean, you most definitely got to play lottery numbers today. Come on, Josh. Yeah. Look at the Irish now. Come I, on. I, now, we I might guess. not be Irish, but come on. We got to partake. I'm not saying I'm not going to play, though. <laughs> okay, but yeah. look, you guys, we're taking you all the way to the kitchen straight from Ireland. Check this out. All right, now, no more corned beef and cabbage, okay? We're yep. talking about the taste of St. Patrick's Day with Chef Catherine on the show. How you doing? Welcome to my farmhouse kitchen here in Ireland. Oh, Ireland, all the way, all the way in Ireland. Yes. Oh, my goodness. So, Chef Catherine, you said we're, we're getting rid of the norms. We're doing something different. It's a new year, yes. new St. Patty's. I heard you have something different for us. What do you have? I do have something different, but one thing that is the norm that will continue is we wear green for St. Patrick's Day, and you've a uh, oh. pretty nice jacket there, I must say. She, she didn't get the memo. You know what? Uh, you guys are leaving me hanging. <laughs> That's okay, because I'll still eat all the food, though. <laughs> but when you think about it, what is Irish? So, wearing green is Irish, wearing shamrock is Irish, but you'll be interested to know, here in Ireland, we don't drink green beer on St. Patrick's Day or any other day of the year. <laughs> And we don't eat corned beef and cabbage. It's not an Irish dish, it's Irish American. Oh, oh but why do we do that? Yeah. Okay, so you're I'm schooling us, Catherine. You. You're schooling us. Oh, I'm gonna make some great dishes for you now. You're gonna love what I've got lined up. But when you think about it here in Ireland, it's called the Emerald Isle. It's full of green fields and dairy cattle outside grazing and producing wonderful creamy milk. They're 95% grass fed outside 250 days of the year. And then truly grass fed, the company take this wonderful milk and they turn it into ghee and cheese and butter. So the message is you start with the best key ingredients. So Ooh. that's what I've done today. So that's what oh, I started. love it. And then from that, I made some Irish scones because I just love scones. Oh, and yeah, then, I love scones mm, too. Mm. Okay. Oh, I made a chowder as well because I thought, you know, uh, you might like that. And I love chowder. Yeah, we love chowder. We love it. Let me see that. And what Wait. kind of chowder is that? Okay, so what we have in here, I used the ghee, I used mm -hmm. smoked bacon, I used Irish salmon, smoked haddock, prawns, potatoes, because it's Irish, yeah? What? And some cream and lots of herbs from my garden here, because that to me is quintessentially Irish. You've got your lo lovely chowder and you've got your homemade scones and it's a marriage made in heaven for St. Patrick's Day. Mm. Now, Catherine, is ghee, is that butter? And it's clarified butter, it's brilliant for not only baking, because it's lactose free, but you get that lovely buttery flavor. But it's fabulous for frying because it has got um, a, a, a higher smoking point. So if you're pan frying a steak or a little bit of a pork chop or a piece of fish mm. or some halloumi, preach oh, you it. Know, that buttery flavor without anything you're burning. Hungry. It's perfect. You preaching over okay, here, Catherine. Okay, you say terrified butter. Oh, so man. I'm thinking terrified butter. I'm thinking like dip, you dip your crab legs in, you know, the uh, butter. Okay. okay, I got it. Okay, now we're talking. Now we're talking. I know. Oh, my. And I made a dessert for you, too. Chocolate and stout pudding in a teacup. How dainty, how cute. Oh, that's but cute. Now, so how did you make that? Very, very easy. I used the ghee for baking, and then I have my self-raising flour in there, orange zest, stout, eggs, melted chocolate. Fabulous. Absolutely yeah. gorgeous. And that'll be Chef, perfect to finish off. Chef, now, oh, you are playing with my emotions. 
with all of that goodness oh, gracious. That delicious food for those delicious ingredients. Yes. <laughs> Fresh from the garden. Oh my God. That is. I, I, I feel like we can't have the green beer and the, you know, we got to really take stick to the traditional. Yes, I you know. feel like we've been doing it wrong, like too American. I think we need to go back to traditional and what it really is. Yeah, we'll just catch a fight over to Catherine's house and she'll cook all that deliciousness for us. <laughs> you got to have us at the farm. Yes. <laughs> now, Catherine, where can we get the ghee from, the truly ghee, the truly um, grass-fed ghee and all that? Where can we find those at? They're available nationwide in the United States. There's no problem in sourcing them, but if you go on to the website, trulygrassfed.com, you'll find out lots more information on the product, how to use them, and also some fabulous recipes, including these recipes today. So there's plenty of inspiration there for St. Patrick's Day, so you can ditch that corned beef and cabbage. Oh, I love mm. it. Now, is there an Irish blessing or a wish? You know, we, we, we want to have luck throughout the whole year, but it's St. Patrick's Day. Should we, should we go out and try to find some clovers or something? Like, is there... Yes, the shamrock is always a symbol of prosperity and health. Um, it, it started off as kind of the story is it's the Holy Trinity as explained by St. Patrick. So it's got a long, long history here in Ireland. So you'd wear the shamrock. And then also I'm going to teach you a little bit of Irish. So you would say, uh, if you're wishing somebody well and you're, you're wishing them a prosperous life, Ganairi on Bohar Lat. Ganairi on Bohar Lat. A Bohar Lat. May the road rise to meet you. Ooh, so may ooh. you always kind of be on the right curve. Oh, I love it, Chef Catherine. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you for all the recipes. Uh, do you have recipes online that they can, our viewers can go look for? Yes, trulygrassfed.com. Trulygrassfed.com. Thank you Chef so Catherine. much for joining us all the way from Ireland. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. And many happy returns. Now, Chef Catherine had us covered with the scones and had the butter and everything like that. Now, you know, we got to have a green cocktail for St. Patrick's Day. We do. I, <laughs> I bet you don't remember the quote she said, like, uh, bridges a line. I bet you don't know how to say it. Don't no, bet you don't remember. I didn't know how to say it after she told me. Oh, okay, because I, I didn't either. I tried, either. though. But I'm look, like, we got you covered with a green cocktail for St. Patty's Day. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. Now, we have our favorite mixologist in the house today. You know he got a festive cocktail for us. Yes, I'll <laughs> toast to that. Welcome back to the show, Ben Gutted. How you doing, hey, ben? ben? I am doing great. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you again for having me. I'm so excited. Happy St. You're all green. Everything is green. All green, everything. <laughs> it's green. <laughs> <laughs> Look, will we be having a green cocktail today? Of course we will. We wouldn't. We, that would be terrible if we didn't do something green for St. Patrick's Day, right? No, that's right. Okay, what you got for us today? So today we're actually going to make Buckeye Vodka's Key Lime Cocktail, right? Oh. So we're not doing just beer dyed with green, though I do have a little green food coloring. That's fine. But oh. we're making this Key Lime Cocktail, which couldn't be simpler or more delicious to make. So we actually start with a plate full of key lime cookies here. Find your favorite lime cookies, whatever you'd like. Ooh. Get them nice and crushed up so they're on a plate for you, okay? Uh-huh. Then the alcohol. So, uh, oh, we will get started with that first. We put that, in, we put that in first? You got to taste test you it You want to put that in first? <laughs> um, that way you, you make sure you didn't forget it. That's what right. we really so, does. She and that's, bu and that's Buckeye Vodka, of course, right? This is Buckeye Vodka, exactly. <laughs> so we're going to put about two ounces uh, into our cup here for mixing. We're going to do about an ounce of pineapple juice. Ooh, okay. I really love. This is this cocktail is really nice and refreshing, which is pretty cool because you get this nice key lime cookie flavor and then uh, pineapple. And then, of course, the vodka, which is pretty good, too. Mm -hmm, of course. Going to do a little drop of vanilla. So I'm not really measuring this. I'm just kind of eyeballing it and I trying don't... to make sure I don't pour a whole lot. You said it's vanilla? Uh, yep, just Ooh, a little bit of vanilla. Okay. Uh, we're going to squeeze uh, a lime in here. Now, I had a real hard time finding key limes near me right now. So they I'm just are using the so lime. hard to find. We get them every once in a while up here in this area. Every once in a while. They're so same. tiny. Yeah. Yeah, they're so tiny, but they're but they're really delicious, nice and tart, mm -hmm. hard to find. Hard to find. So for that, we squeeze. So a regular lemon, or regular, excuse me, a regular lime is fine. Okay, and then we're going to do okay. a drop of green food coloring. 
Ooh. Boy, I'm really bad at this. Sometimes I get like six drops in here, but I'm going for one. Oh my gosh, well, I got perfect, one in there. So perfect, perfect. <laughs> Live television, I got one drop in. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> All right. Into our other mixer here, we've got, we've just filled it up with ice okay. so that we can get a nice shake on it. And this is going to really chill up the drink, which is kind of what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Mix it all Then around. we're going to break that seal. Let me see how there green one drop can get the drink. Oh, I'm telling you, you're going to be surprised. Oh here we got this nice martini glass. We also filled it up with ice so it's nice and chill. Uh -huh. Here we go. You ready? Let's look at this. Oh, oh wow. Yay. Oh, man. That's, Isn't there that you nice? go. That is beautiful. You, that's, that's the one drop you want in there. That's the one, right. If you would have had six, it would have been dark green. Look at that. Now, Ben, <laughs> I, I, look, Ben, I feel like if we just take the collection of all your all your videos and when you guest on this show, guest star on the show, we could become yeah. a professional bartender. Heck yeah, you could. Right, like right, you right. Can, a uh, range of drinks. But Ben, of what, what makes Buckeye Vodka the perfect choice for all your cocktails? Yeah. You know what makes it a perfect choice is it's you know it's been around for 10 years or celebrating 10 years this year. It's so smooth. I mean, that's really where it comes at. Some vodkas, you know, can kind of leave you with a, a weird sort of aftertaste or just sort of sits in your throat wrong. Vodka vodka doesn't do that. It's nice and smooth. Um, it's a premium vodka at an affordable price, which is also nice as well. So you're not having to like reach for the top shelf and buy something that's really expensive. Mm -hmm. You're getting something that's affordable and delicious. I know that's our yeah. style right there. The the uh, we don't really drink beer like that, mm -hmm. and I didn't. I've never yeah. had green beer. Green I, I wasn't beer. looking forward to green beer. Right. We can do this all day long. We <laughs> yeah. can do this cocktail right here. Now, what are you doing with the cookies? Well, see, now here's the thing. I got so excited that I got one drop of green food coloring in. I forgot to put my glass. Oh, in the, the cookie! You forgot nice the rim. Cookie rim. <laughs> I, I, I celebrated so early. <laughs> just one drop of green it food happens. Wait a minute, Ben. Have you been drinking? Wait a minute. No. You've been practicing Not too today. much. You know. <laughs> Well, when you get to start, when the, when the Buckeye vlog gets to pouring and flowing, you know, you might forget it a step or two, but it still looks good. It's it looks definitely, beautiful. It looks good. It's still good. And you know what? It's still going to be delicious. I can eat the cookies separate. You can That's dip okay. them, whatever dip you want to do. It, exactly, but it's still going to be delicious. And can you tell our viewers where can they find Buckeye Vodka? They don't know. They should know by now, but where can they find Buckeye Vodka? They should know. Look for Buckeye Vodka at your favorite liquor store near you, or if you're out at a restaurant and a bar, just ask for it. They've got it. And you're going to get to enjoy it. Tell them to make this key lime cocktail for you. They're going to love it. Key lime. I like key lime, by the way. Ben, uh, you yes. always right on time. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Look, don't, don't get too tore up now, okay? <laughs> you you got to come I'll back just, and... Uh, I'll just keep drinking this. And yeah. Then I'll oh, see and the cookies, right. All right, Ben. Thanks yes, so much. Sir. We'll see you next time, all right? Thank you all so right. much. You guys, we got more cribs in the CLE. When we get back, don't go anywhere, you guys. <laughs> You're watching Cribs in the CLE. All right, guys, welcome back. Today's recipe, if you missed it, from my last guest, guest Ben Gullett, if you missed today's recipe, just go to cribsinthecle.com. The key lime cookie martini is listed there. Uh -huh. So we thank I'll ben be logging for, on. Yeah, I, I, I figure you will be logging on. <laughs> but at the same time, um, I, I briefly wanted to, you know, get back to uh, Cheryl Osborne, mm -hmm. and just to reiterate, um, I think the understanding that she she lacked the understanding of both Cheryl and the repercussions of what Pierce Morgan was saying. And I wish we had more time to unpack it, but that's what I was trying to get at. Basically, I think she rushed to defend her friend when even our friends can can say things that we just don't agree with and that are wrong. So I think that's what took place. But uh, I did want to show you guys this video of. They did grandma wrong, man. Look, look at this video real quick. Why they do Nana like that? Dang. Hold on, show, show that again real quick. Go ahead, repeat, play it real quick. Why they gonna go ahead and do Nana like that? Oh, yeah, no. oh my goodness. Oh, come on back. Out. Why they do Nana like that? That's a grandma. You guys, we love you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow right here on Cribs and the CLE. CLE. Enjoy your day and be safe out there. You're watching Cribs in the CLE.